All the videos this week are about how to use the row reduction algorithm to solve problems already introduced in this course. In this video, I want to talk about linear combinations. In the activities for week three, I asked you to write a vector as a linear combination of other vectors. I didn't provide an algorithm, and you were left to figure it out on your own. Now, using row reduction, let me provide an algorithm for this problem. I want to write some vector u as a linear combination of some other vectors v and w if possible. Let me try and rephrase what is going on. If v and w are linearly independent, they form a basis for the span, span of v and w. u can be written as a linear combination only if it is in that span. If it is, I am writing u in terms of the basis of that span v and w. This is how I prefer to present the problem. In a span, the basis describes everything. How do I use that basis to describe a specific vector in the span? Let me show you some examples of writing a vector in dif different bases to make this clear. There are many bases for R2. Indeed, any two linearly independent vectors in R2 form a basis. Take a specific vector, 4, 5. In terms of the standard basis, the axis vectors, v is equal to 4 times e1 plus 5 times e2, 4 units in the x direction, and 5 units in the y direction. However, for any other basis, I can apply that basis to describe 4, 5 as well. For the ba basis 4, 0 and 0, 5, v is 1 times 4, 0 plus 1 times 0, 5. This is describing the vector v in terms of the basis 4, 0, and 0, 5. The vectors 1, 1 and negative 1, 1 are also a basis. How can I write v in terms of this basis? It turns out that v is 9 half times 1, 1 plus 1 half times negative 1, 1. In the first coordinate, I get 9 halves minus 1 half, which is 8 halves or 4. And in the second coordinate, I get 9 halves plus 1 half, which is 10 halves, or 5, and I do recover the vector v this way. The idea in this video is that I can do this for any basis of R2. Moreover, these constants are unique. 9 halves and 1 halves are the only constants that work for this basis, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. For any vector in a span and any basis of that span, there is exactly one way to write that vector as a linear combination of the basis vectors. Having hopefully reconceptualized the problem, let me move on to the general algorithm. And I'll work by examples to try and demonstrate this. The span of negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 0, negative 2, 3 is a plane in R3. These two vectors are linearly independent, so they are a basis for the plane. I have another vector, negative 4, negative 4, 7, which I think is on the plane, and I want to write it in terms of this basis, as a linear combination of this basis. This is the form of a linear combination. I want to find constants a and b that make this work. Let me write the three equations I get by looking at the first, second, and third components of these vectors. In the first component, negative 4 is equal to negative 2a plus 0b. In the second component, negative 4 is equal to a minus 2b. And in the third component, 7 is equal to negative a plus 3b. And this is now a system of three equations. Now I have written the matrix of this system. Notice its columns. The constant column is the vector I want to describe, and the other columns are the basis vectors I am using. I can build this matrix directly from the vectors if I want. Then I row reduce. This row reduction gives me the values of the unknowns a and b. In this case, a equals 2 and b equals 3. And therefore, I have a solution. The vector negative 4, negative 4, 7 is 2 times the first basis vector plus 3 times the second basis vector. I also verified that negative 4, negative 4, 7 was indeed on the plane. 
If the vector was not on the plane, if it was not part of the span, this algorithm would produce no solutions. The matrix would row reduce to a matrix with ro a row equivalent to 0 equals 1, which means there are no solutions. Let me do another example. This is a basis for R3, since these three vectors are linearly independent, and I could check this with the last video's algorithm, putting them into a matrix as rows and counting the leading ones, and I would get three leading ones showing their linear independence. These three vectors span all of R3, so any vector in R3 can be written uniquely as a linear combination. I want to describe the vector 1, 1, 2 in terms of this basis. I want to find numbers a, b, and c to make this equation true. And I follow the procedure from the last example. I make an extended matrix with the new vector as the vector of constants and the three basis vectors as the vectors on the left of the separation. Then I row reduce. I get a unique solution as I expected, and I read off the coefficients. The first row says that a equals zero, the second row that b equals one half, and the third that c equals one half. Therefore, I have my expression and I can write 112 in terms of this basis of R3.